to all of you here today and to all of you who are viewing us uh, from the web as we are here. I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Kathleen Riley. I'm um, going just tell you a little bit about my background. In addition to having a doctorate in piano performance from NYU, I've been researching the use of technology and biofeedback to aid musicians for over 10 years. I'm delighted to have one of my colleagues and research assist um, colleagues with me. This is Dr. John Chong of the Musicians Clinics of Canada. We are delighted to welcome you to the workshop presented by, the reason I'm reading this is a lot of people are presenting this, the Performers Network in collaboration with the Center for Music and Arts Entrepreneurship, the New Orleans Musicians Clinic, Yamaha Corporation of America, as represented here today by Lafarque Pianos, um, who were gracious to provide and and the Performing Arts Medical Center. I have been working with the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute to help form the first comprehensive interdisciplinary, medically-based global performance enhancement network. This introduces an extraordinary initiative to improve the quality of life for our musical community. Our goal is for pedagogues and musicians to play a key role in the health and well-being of performers and students worldwide through collaborations with neurologists, psychologists, occupational and physical therapists, music therapists, and other specialists. Today's exciting presentation features the Proforma Vision software program designed and provided by David Markarian and the design team at Precision Biometrics. This program allows us to look at music performance under the microscope. As you will see, this program simultaneously layers and analyzes two high-definition cameras with surface EMG that measures muscle tension. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And MIDI data, which we'll see on the, on the screen, from the piano. The state-of-the-art technology works in conjunction with the Yamaha Disclavier pianos, the Clavinovas, and the Avant Grands. And now for the icing on the cake. We are so fortunate to have two of New Orleans' top pianists with us today for a live demonstration. We welcome John Cleary and David Torkinowski. So we're going to have John work with us first, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the technology before we begin. First of all, I just want you to know this is all very simple to use. And for anybody who's hooking anyone up, you don't have to take a course in anatomy and know the names of every muscle. We make it very, very easy to look at. What we're seeing here is a device that John actually has on his front, which is a box, which is called our dynamic EMG, and that is talking to this little box up here. Okay, Through that, we are going to see signals on the screen, which will be showing us the activity of his muscles. I have electrodes, surface electrodes placed on his top of his shoulders, his trapezius muscles, and also on his forearm, the top of his forearm. We're looking at his, his extensors. This is giving us a wide range of um, muscle activity. It's not just one specific muscle. So therefore, if you don't put it in an exact place, it's OK. So what you're going to look at on the screen is in those top boxes, you're going to see red lines and blue lines go across. In the left set box, you're going to see the blue line representing John's left shoulder active muscle activity, and the red line, his forearm. And in the right box, you will see his right shoulder with the blue line and his right forearm with the red line when we see that come across. Okay? Now, the reason I like to use the video cameras is look how we can see when you John begins to play, you'll see his hands from a different angle than the musician themselves would see as you're performing. So before we actually push the button and see what you look like, why don't you just play a little something for us?
you. Thank you. Okay, so as wonderful and enjoyable as it is to just have us sit and listen to music, when those of us who are teaching and, and also looking at music from these analytical perspectives, as fabulous as that was, it's fleeting and it's sound in time and even visually for us, that performance is gone. So now we're gonna ask you to play just a little snippet of okay. that and we're actually going to now take a look at what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna start a test with you. Where are you? There you are. Okay, and we just okay. push this button. Green light comes on. I will tell you when to start. All right. Okay. Take a look at what we see. All right, we see a lot of lines up here, a lot of notes, but before we even talk about that, we're now going to look at it and hear it come back to us. Okay. I'm going to give us a little bit more. We're going to look at that data from the piano in a minute in a little more detail, but let's take a look at what we see and hear. Now, I just didn't mean to stop it, I meant to just pause it. Let's now talk about what's up there, okay? What we're seeing here is, again, this blue line and the blue line is representing his shoulder, right? So we see that the shoulder, if I look at you from this perspective, you've got a little bit more muscle activity or tension in the left side than the, than the right, okay? And the left and right, I would say the forearms are moving about equally well. Now, those lines aren't telling me anything is bad. Okay, but if I give you my interpretation of the red, when we use our hands, we're actually going to have those muscles extend. But the fact that he has dips, okay, every time we see dips, we like that because it means that we're letting go of that tension for a moment, okay? And oftentimes in music, and especially in pianists, we tend to hold or play with more tension than we need to. And there isn't anything else we can do to a key on the keyboard after we strike it. We can't make it louder. We can't make a vibrato. We can't do anything to it. It's going to go away. So what we try to train everybody to do is to play with an optimal level of tension. Just as when a runner wants to improve his time, he goes to a coach to streamline his movements, okay, to take the weight out, to make it more effortless. So when we begin to use biofeedback, and look at what someone's muscles are doing. Even someone who's playing excellent with no problem can actually optimize and improve their performance and make it feel easier, okay? Now, if we step this, and this is really neat, we just take a step here, we're gonna just see everything go to another point together. Or if I decide that, gee, I wanna take this line and I wanna look at that spot, well, now we see the hand position. We see the notes that are being played. And I'm going to expand this screen in a moment. And we're seeing where the muscles were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a spot right over here where there was a big amount of tension. And I'm going to see right in that area. Do I see anything? Well, that's a little blurry. So if I step it, maybe it'll clear up. There. And I can see that probably it was just because the hand was stretched out. But what I would like to try to do is to see if you could play with a little bit less shoulder. 
activity. Do you get tight or tired anywhere when you play? Um, yes, I suppose so. Over the course of a three or three hour gig, yeah, I guess so. Okay, and and have you had any tension problems or? Um, I had a slip disc in my neck, which probably was exacerbated by playing. Okay. Yeah. And that may be also the cause for some of the higher shoulder activity yeah. as well. Right. And when you play, do you have any aches or pains? Or I do sometimes, yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. could you describe those a little bit? Um, probably comes from not warming up, just starting to play on a gig and playing hard yeah. from the get-go. Yeah. That would I'm be not just warming like up the and then just fine feeling the muscles and tensing up and, and yeah. Yeah, I'm about to have to do this to kind of... Well, we always suggest that in warming up, we really start with something that is slower, mm. or even if we're pay, playing something like with, with some of my classical students, they can play something that they play that's hard and fast, but play it at a slower tempo. Mm. So it's just to really, yes, let the muscles begin to warm up and mm -hmm. let the body get ready. And also, do you do any stretching? No. Okay. That's also a good thing, especially because you play for so many hours at a time. Mm. So if you incorporate some stretches before, um, even in the middle, take a little, if you have a break, do a little bit of stretching, mm -hmm. use, m moving the muscles and moving the body in the opposite way that it's been playing. In you don't suggest to do it in the middle of a song. Not in the middle of a song. <laughs> no, no, no. I think we can leave that one out. But these are some of the things that will also help you. And it's things that we know that athletes have been taught this for a long time. None of us were taught this. You know, the motto when I was at Manhattan School of Music was no pain, no gain. You know, we lived in a practice room all day long. You know, we, we took breaks, we went down to the cafeteria and had some coffee and, you know, <coughs> something to eat, and we went back in the practice room. But we find that over the years that that does create problems. It creates tension, it creates chronic issues, which Dr. Chong will be glad to, to talk about in a few minutes. But um, let's maybe have you look at the screen. And this time I'm just going to let it run across, and you're not going to have to play. But we're going to have you put your hands up and we're just going to see if we can lower the, the levels of what we see, okay? So. What do you want me to do? Oh, I'm just going to have you place your hands there, right? And see how that line is up. Yeah, we're going to wiggle this a little bit. We're going to relax in here. Right. Now, your right shoulder is very good. That's even lower. But this one seems awfully good. Now, you don't have to hold the shoulder up to hold the arm up. Okay, so let's now do another one. Same thing. And this time, I want you to just do a nice five note up and down like this. And then when you stand, I want you to stop. And at that point, I should see both lines going back down. Okay. Just with the left hand? Both. We'll put them right in here. And now you want all those lines to drop. And again. Relax your shoulders. And again. Without the shoulder. <laughs> you wanted to add a new note. Okay. All right. Now. That was better, but could you feel when I was saying to not use your shoulder that you were actually holding that shoulder up? I don't, when I'm yeah. playing, I don't even think about that. I know, I know. I'm thinking about the music, and this stuff is, I've got no and idea what's going a, on. Let's take a look as we review it, and this will be fun, because we haven't talked about our MIDI yet, and this is a really interesting piece for us to look at. Where's our last one? So now I'm going to open this so we really can see MIDI for a minute. So now, there are all the note bars for what he just played. This is a little simpler to look at than the first piece he played for us because we have less bars. Okay, but what we're seeing in the bars that we see the colors, the colors are reflecting dynamics. Okay, these are all in about the same range. We can also see whether, like here your hand just inadvertently hit a second note, it's going to show but we can see whether notes are overlapping, whether they're clean, and his, his 
note to note is fine. Now if I play this and we watch the cursor go across, come back to the beginning. Even there, and that's what I love to do with some of my students who are not aware that they don't do the same thing in both hands, you know. And I'll say, well, look, in, in the right hand, you were able to hold, you held something longer than you did in the left. Again, an unawareness in them for what they're doing, when we see it visually on the, on the page, we can understand how the notes are being played. So it's just now we can step this again. And it's, it's going to continue to show us what's happening. So now, because we have so much of that, we did your little exercise and relaxation. We're going to let you now play another 20 seconds or so. And this time, we'll, we'll look at the MIDI for what it is. You know, we'll, we'll really pull it apart. OK? So in a second, and ready. Like to come sure. in and you want to do some, yeah. see if we can try to yeah. fix this yeah. sh uh, left shoulder here. So now what's yeah. going to happen is that Dr. Chong is going to work with you. <coughs> so this is going to be funny stuff. Make right. some medical adjust yeah. suggestions and kind of yeah. look at his muscles. It's Clinics of Canada. And uh, I've been doing this since 1986, so I've seen a lot. And this is a very, very common problem, tensing in the shoulders. So we look at it, first of all, ergonomically. We measure it, we identify the problem, and then we're going to try a few tricks to see if we can fix it. Okay? But right. first of all, we're going to talk. So when you had that neck problem, mm -hmm. if you remember, you were going to Europe, you were telling me. Can you just recount what happened to you? Um, yes, I'd been in the studio working long hours, doing repetitive stuff on the piano, and operating a mouse at the same time, because I was recording digital stuff like this MIDI information. And I um, wasn't aware that there was a problem, but I woke up the following morning unable to move. 
pretty much. And it um, was unfortunate I had to fly that day to England to start a tour. Right. And it got progressively worse. And it ended up with me doing a whole tour with one hand. And my right arm essentially stopped working to the point where the muscle fiber started to disappear. Right. And all the muscles in the top clenched up. It was all bunched up really tight. And this was just kind of dangling and basically shriveling away. And um, they identified that I had a, a slipped disc in, the, in my neck. Mm -hmm. And advised me that it, if I left it alone, it would probably get better. <laughs> and they said it was lucky that it hadn't happened in, the, in this country, because they probably would have operated. Yeah, that's so that was the advice from the surgeons in England. I saw a specialist in Holland, Ireland, uh -huh. England, um, Vienna, <coughs> right. all sorts of places. Right. So, um, so it was a slip disc, and I imagine it was probably as a result of, of um, bad posture. And tension. A lot of tension, yeah. So can you tell yeah. us about your tension, where you think it comes from? Um, I think sometimes when you're playing music, if you're playing it right, gets pretty intense and um, the intensity that you're trying to generate from the, from the, the music that's coming out of your instrument is, is often can be better generated if you're tense at the same time if you're completely relaxed it's very hard I would imagine to, to, to express something that's got a lot of tension and a lot of the music the R&B and funk music is a, is a a build up of tension and a release of tension that applies to any form of music really right. but there's some stuff where you have to get stuck in and and, and uh, i think you bunch up and the adrenaline's flowing and then perhaps you just it doesn't calm down at the end of the performance it kind of stays that way and if you play every night and you're traveling and doing all the other things you do as a musician then it probably compounds whatever was wrong to you start very with very tense before a performance not always, sometimes not tense at all. Other performances, yes, it's different every time. I mean, you, um, it's not something you switch on and off. It's, you know, you right. perform and you play depending on how you feel at the time. If you're relaxed before a gig, then that could be for a variety of reasons. Right. It could be all sorts of other reasons why you might be tense before you sit down and play. So, <coughs> comment on a few medical things first, okay? Mm. Alignment and breathing. Mm. and coordination. So do you think about your hands all the time or do you have some concept? Of I don't think about anything. Like, all I think about is, the, is the focusing on the music right. and it's something that's up there somewhere and with the mechanics of it I'm completely oblivious to, to posture or... So that's why we like slow things down and start with alignment and breathing mm -hmm. and see if we can get you to reduce yeah. the tension. So. Can you tell us about your breathing now? What's happening? Where are you breathing? Where is the air going? Well, my breathing's usually pretty good because I'm normally singing at the same time that I'm oh. playing. Okay. So that involves all sorts of, as you're aware, all sorts of muscles in your back and in your diaphragm and, and your, your posture's important there as well. Right. But um, I tend to sing pretty hard pretty loud so it, it involves a lot of muscle power okay. do you warm up your voice yes i do yeah want to do it just a little bit no not no. in front of people no because it's painful for anybody else to listen <laughs> okay, to. okay that's fine the last thing you want is me yodeling before okay <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> i'll give you a <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about, how about, sing, how about singing? Sounds yeah, how about singing a, a bit, even on the back? Well, See what I happens. usually don't like to sing unless I'm warmed up. But, uh, I'll have to sing something. For you. When I'm feeling kind of sad and lonely, lost my sweet one and lonely, I'm gonna find my baby. I don't mean no maybe, I'm gonna find a So let's work on posture and breathing together. Okay. okay. So can you just pretend there's somebody pulling you up? Okay. And then you're sort of going down. Do you ski? Probably not no. down here. No. Okay. You're just going downhill. Okay. So okay. you're. And then you like to stomp your feet. So your feet yeah. are in a well planted. So a lot of weights going mm -hmm. there, and you're just sitting on your sits bones. Okay. And feel your head is very light. Okay. 
And just take a big breath in through your belly. Keep this very quiet. There you go, that's better. Okay, so sing one note and try to, not too long, mezzo piano, and keep it as long as you can go. Fill your belly button. Oop, oop, not too much chest now. From mm -hmm. here. Just an ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. So, with that feeling, when you load your belly button, the belly button goes out, the diaphragm flattens, you try to keep your chest and shoulders quiet, okay? And just feel that your arms are dangling around, mm -hmm. okay? And your bum's kind of sticking out of it more, and your head's just really light, okay? So you're not clenching. Now, if I told you that if you clench just a little bit, 20%, you're going to cut off the blood supply about 80%. Oh. So it's just like you're strangling the muscles. So that's the way we're built. Mm. And then we add in the tension. I'm scared. I'm, something's not right. The sound's blah, blah, blah. All mm. the musician things that fly around in our head. Mm. And then it builds internally. Okay, so you want to clear your mind. Go to your favorite place. Okay, and breathe like that. Okay, do it again. Do what again? The same? Do yeah, it. just it's the same, same thing. Feel kind of sad and lonely. Lost my sweet one and lonely. Now I'm going to find my baby. Now I don't mean no baby. Going to find her. Yeah, I'm going to find my baby. Going to bring her home. Feel any different before we measure? Um, I guess it feels a little bit, a uh, bit more controlled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're okay. not squeezing. Okay, so that's the key thing. So now we're going to take a look. Do the same thing again. Jump. Sure. Let's sing. Yeah. <laughs> Down to Texas, going to Georgia, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Florida. I'm going down to Alabama, down to Louisiana, Tennessee. I'm going to find my baby, going to bring her home with me. So I say that this is much better here yeah. and I think this is a little bit more relaxed. Let's take a look at play it back. I think that your your shoulders are a place like I do where you kind of feel that emotion too, you know? Yeah, well I tend to I tend to lean into a piano like this. Where do, where do you feel that? My left hand's moving in this region. Okay. The right yeah. hand's covering all this hair, so it's... Oh, yeah, he's twerking. Yeah, he's twerking it. So that's, the, that's kind of the way I feel comfortable playing. Right. That's right. my sort of... Hmm. Well, we should look at that. Position, I assume. That yeah. I think that that's exactly... It's like one of those positions that feels good, yeah. but may not... You know, it may be more optimal if you... Did it different, but, but anyway. when I'm playing, though, I, like I say, I don't think about any of this stuff. Yeah. It's just uh, whatever need to uh, think just, about the sound that's so coming John, out the other yeah. end. And if I'm conscious of all this stuff, then I can I lose yeah. oh, no. focus on yeah. what I'm supposed to be exactly. concentrating on. Exactly. So, so we want to separate the studio from the stage. From. So if you practice these things yeah. and right. make these changes slowly, it'll kind of yeah. creep into your. When new we technique. do retraining or any awareness building of anything that's different. It's not going to be like push the button mm. and it changes, mm. and you're not, you know, and it's it's just something to be aware of. Sure. And when you do warm up at home mm -hmm. in the studio, and you're just you're just kind of feeling like, oh, I'm going to get ready and get my body ready. These would just be some things to think about, to be aware mm. of the shoulders, to be aware of your posture, and to be aware of how your arms feel. 
I know that in working with many musicians with the biofeedback, that over a period of time, there's just a real subtle awareness that begins to build in themselves without my even having yeah. to say a lot, you know, just because you begin to see when things are different on the screen and then it just kind of speaks to you, you know, but it's not something where we're just going to have this no, I say like forty five years. Wash over you. Forty five years, yeah. The hard but, piano but, is but again, be hard it's to just understand. like the runner saying, gee, I want to tweak something a little mm. bit, you know, and we can maybe just just have it come back and sound different. But let's take a look here. And this time I think we should focus on um, the video window too. Let's watch the video. See what we see in the hand position. <laughs> show you here is I'm going to back up over here and I want you to notice that this wrist I've been I was I can see this one better than the left but it's it's kind of high and I think that when I you want to think of the from the forearm and the elbow to the top of your large knuckle is kind of being a, almost like a straight line with just a little bit of a dip in the in like the a wrist level line, you mean? Yeah, but the wrist, if anything, is going to have a little bit of a disc dip or elasticity to yeah. it. So that between the elbow, the wrist, and the shoulder, there should always be some elasticity there. Nothing should be rigid. Mm. Okay, because one is, when one is rigid, like if you lock your elbow, your whole arm is going to be stiff. And your arm is going to feel like it weighs more. Mm. Okay, so when we take the weight out or we try to make it more optimal, we try to release those points. Okay, so, so what I want you to do in... We won't, we, I just want to try something for a moment. When, sure. you, when you just have your um, hand up, right, and when you play, you just want to feel this little dip in your, mm -hmm. yeah, like that. So that it's not maybe staying up here, it's not, and that, oh, this, is, this can't lock. Mm. I should, you feel like there's a pocket of air there. Now let me just, if I were starting a new test, I think we can just have the video up for one second. I'm just going to use this for video. Okay, I'm not even going to start it. I just want you to look at the video windows now. We're just going to use this as a live feed, okay, because I want you to see your hand position. I don't want to run a test. I just want you to use this now without doing anything else. And so that when you play, you want to balance the finger from the knuckle so that when you strike, there's a whole hand balance behind it like this. Nope, you're, well, you're doing it from here. Mm. This forearm is going to drop, yeah, as a whole unit. Okay. And this is like your knee. If this doesn't bend, it's more awkward to walk. You're going to keep that, yeah, just like that, okay? And you want to feel like this alignment is there. Okay? So just, uh-huh. Okay. Now, if you look in the, if you look in the video window, where do you see the straight line to? Do you see it to the large knuckle? By the straight line, you mean the line well, from the, the elbow? Well, the line from the elbow coming out. Where does it, where does it end up? I'm not quite sure what you're asking me. When this goes out, where does it curve? Where do your fingers start to curve down? Play again. Play it's chord. Going from here. Yeah. So I want the curve to come from here. From there? No, from this one. <laughs> okay, put your hand out like this position, right? Mm. Okay, what can we do with our hand to pick anything up? We can't, right? So where do the f fingers bend naturally from? From? Well, no. everything's bending. <laughs> yeah, but, but if I just want to pick up a pencil. Okay, pick up from there. From there. Good. So that's where I, and now we have a really nice set of muscles in the hand itself that help with finger movement, and they're all around this large knuckle. Not down here. So if we think about that movement starting here, and then let that just follow along with it. But anything that's going to happen is going to come from all the power. The power in the hand is from this knuckle. Because you know what else it does? 
that bony structure of the knuckle allows me to stabilize my hand on the keyboard. My finger, I, I feel like I could just stay there forever. You want the second knuckle, I know. Give me this knuckle, right? Okay, so drop. No, just one finger. Good, and relax all the rest of them. Good, and feel when you go down. Feel like this knuckle, you, you can feel that it's stabilizing you. Okay, now do this one. Drop the whole arm. Good, and relax the other fingers. <coughs> relax the thumb. Now your hand is out like this, right? Mm -hmm. Let it go like that. Just let, oh, your pinky's up. Yeah, you don't have to I hold the more, fingers up. It's harder yeah. for me to, to it's, it's, there's no effort involved in my pinky going like that. If it's that, then there's an effort. It's more effort. Ha! <laughs> we'll see about that. Maybe not effort you perceive. However, hmm. let's see. I have to. I have to do a new test. I didn't do it. All right. Get to drop on the note the way you want. Okay. Now, can we drop on it the way I want? Just let these rest. So if you hold your hand in resting position, right. Mm -hmm. So just plop them all on the keyboard. Ready? There. But relax this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, not from there. make a, a rounder tone. Your fingers, okay. Okay. Now, let's play again. Okay, just play just something simple. Something, okay. Something simple. That's not simple. Your, your, your hand is very, very, very comfortable in that alignment. Which isn't bad because, I mean, it's not that your forearm is doing mm. something bad. This is not something where I'd say, oh my gosh, we need to change this. But this would be just something that I would say, wow, if I do this way, I have more power. But mm. it might also be because of my hand size. So your hand size is different. So I think it, that's, that's something that's going to be yeah, so I think, as I say, once you've done you. it for years, you've got used to yeah. a certain way of doing things, and I that think feels so. more That's relaxed. not going to pass, yeah, yeah. And, and you've pre proven it. It's really not, it's not up there too much. So, um, okay. Is there any piece that you would like to, to play for us that you would like to look at, or anything you would like? Those All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's just do a little snippet of it. I think I better just shut this on and off again for us. Okay. And wait till it goes. Okay.
Well, you play beautifully. I think your profile looks quite good. I mean, nothing to really complain about, you know. Oh, yeah, good but it's, it's, it's <laughs> actually one of the happiest things for a lot of musicians is what, you know, some people come to me and they think they have a little tension somewhere or they're afraid, you know, something's really wrong. And it can be something as simple as um, with a saxophone player who came to me uh, several years ago, um, everything was just working perfectly technically. His neck strap was bothering him. So he switched to a shoulder harness and got rid of all his neck pain, you know, and so, I mean, it's really nice to be able to look at performance from these perspectives and see, wow, things are working, maybe this could be tweaked, maybe this is fine, or maybe there is an injury. And we have seen, both John and I have seen people who have had serious injuries, such as focal dystonia or tendonitis or carpal tunnel, and this is a real window into if we give directions to someone are they understanding it? Is it being perceived correctly inside their body, physiologically? And, are there, and where do we have to make other changes? So, well, I want to thank you for helping thank you us very today. Much. Thank you, John. Done? You're done. Oh. And we're going to pass. We're going to pass this over. And why don't you do a little? Yeah. So don't get a neck strap for the piano. That's the moral. <laughs> no, that's really true. I don't want you to go anywhere. I'm going to have you come here. All right. Would you like to? Say a few words. I'll sure. Do this. Okay, cool. So, what I was getting at there with the breathing, us musicians, we think a lot. And we, we don't really, like dancers, work with our bodies. Now, th there are exceptions, but most of us just sit and play in the studio right from when did you start, John? About five. Five, yeah. I started at three. So, the way we actually see ourselves are big brain and big mitts and a big face. The rest of us just doesn't exist. We have no conception. So this is a big test one, two, test one, two. And you get for a for So a lot of the times when I'm telling the patients or my students, they go to some drills and take advantage of the classroom, do other sports, do something different to activate the brain new circuits. And then suddenly it just comes into the demo techniques, like magic. Well, my history with EMP goes a long way. I started in 1996 with very crude instruments. And before that, I was, as a doctor, flying blind. I saw hundreds and hundreds of patients who had repetitive strain injuries from computers and playing musical instruments. And I really, just like here, tried all kinds of tricks to reduce the tension. But now the state-of-the-art performer vision takes it a whole other step further by linking the video from different angles right, and the MIDI. That's what I'm so excited about. And we can play it back. So you can actually objectively look at yourself. Okay, Objectively look at yourself. And we're not very good at that, as you probably remember. We're kind of <clears throat> a little bit hard. Okay. So in a non-judgmental, analytic way, okay, we can play it back and say, hey, just like in the studio, we can touch it up. And in this case, we're not fooling with Pro Tools. We're actually fooling with your movement patterns. So by observing it, somehow that seeps into our nervous system. Yep. Monkey I'll see, monkey do. But the monkey is actually yourself. And you actually start learning how to make these changes in the studio. And then you don't think about it when you go on the stage. It just happens. Okay. So the reason that we, well, I okay. wanted to have all of these things on one screen at the same time is that while we can gather certain information from the muscle tension with the dynamic EMG, and while we can see certain things with video, when you put the two of them together, you really have proof positive of what position something was, somebody was in or what happened in the hand. And when, we do an, when I do an analysis with this program, I can step it and just look from finger to finger what was going on. Did the wrist dip? Did the thumb flatten out? Did the knuckles collapse? And what happened to the spikes in the tension? And then being able to see the music data from the, from the Yamaha is just amazing because we get to really see then how the fingers are affected in their musical expression.
Okay, so David, welcome. I'm going to have you actually sit, and then I will hook the extensors to your electrodes. Probably can't get through airport security with this. I don't think so. Yeah, I think they might uh, think you were trying to do something. So we have actually one of our leads goes to a bony structure. It's called our ground, and I usually put it up here on one of the vertebrae by the neck. And we have a set of leads that we're going to put. One set is going to go up onto his right shoulder, or left shoulder. I'm on the left side, aren't I? Am I on the left? I'm on the left. I'm backwards. I'm looking at all of you and I'm calling it right. Okay. So we have two, two pads up here. They're just kind of like surface pads with just a little electrode on them. And that's what is measuring. We're measuring the muscle activity between those two points. And then we put two on this forearm. And then we come over to this side. So when I'm working medically, th these guys are great. You guys don't really have any problems. Technical problems are medical problems, except that one tour you were kind of burned out. But I, I see patients who are completely, like you were crippled. They can't play, they're in terrible pain. They can't work, it's a disaster. So this type of technology is, is much more efficient to, for me medically to analyze you know, what's going on. Like for example, if your shoulders are way up you know, at that time, and that may be stress-related stuff, or not sleeping, or the Do you working with, as well. Yeah, so I, I haven't brought my all the rigs, but I'll use the <laughs> EMG heart rate variability. It's a little clip. But it's we're really, really cool. yeah, we're really just focusing yeah. today on the Proforma Vision. Yeah. That's our our yeah. piece, and that's what we're yeah. we're here to show everyone because this is really the piece that's being used in conjunction with the Performers Network and trying to. What's exciting about this technology is that we're able to have teachers learn how to use this and how to just see what's going on in their students because that's something that we can't know. We could say something the same way to 10 students and have it be perceived totally differently inside that person. So this is giving me proof, especially with younger students, with intermediate students, what's going on. And then as a pedagogue, I'm able to make better choices for repertoire, you know, what's really fitting Am I giving them too much? Is it too advanced? Or are they really able to, to do it? And this is really something that's so important because if we can teach pedagogues how to do this correctly and be aware of what's going on, we're going to build healthier musicians. We're going to have less problems in people as they get older. And we're going to build an awareness of what needs to happen in terms of practicing, in terms of learning how to warm up and to do what we need to do you know, in terms of our bodies. Um, many of my students over the years who have come to me um, don't work out. They don't do any stretching, they don't do swimming, they don't do any kind of exercise at all. They're sitting in a practice room. And I've noticed over the last several years, especially as I do workshops across the country, that more and more students are beginning to exercise and are aware of also eating well. But, yes? You mentioned several times doing stretching. Yes. Um, as, as a pianist, what stretches are you talking about? I'm still, I'm talking about whether you may, maybe you take a, a yoga class or no, I mean like right before you play piano. Oh, right before you play. Or, 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 or you take a break, like that. that point you could time. do something like just stretching the arms back like this so that you're extending your neck. You know, because we're sitting hunched over in that position a lot of times. Um, if you're working on strenuous repertoire, just a gentle stretch of the, the hand so that you're, you're stretching out the forearm. You know, and to do a few neck rolls just to be able to, to let the muscles relax or be out of that position that they've been in for a long period of time. But I think that if you also incorporate swimming, yoga, and other stretching forms of exercise in your routine, weekly routine, it does make a difference as well. And don't forget that our, we're really taxing the muscles of our upper body when we play any of our instruments. So we need to make sure they're in good condition. Okay. All right, so I think we'll begin before we even hear have you play, um, maybe just to ask you the questions of have you had any problems, injuries, or anything you want to... I, I, um, 
<clears throat> I also have a, a slip disc in my neck. It happened when I was trying to lift a piece of equipment. Um, I didn't have the, uh, the uh, severe side effects that he had. It was you know, mostly back pain. I wear these Z coils. Hmm. Uh, my back pain pretty much went away overnight. Wow. After I started wearing them, it takes the shock of walking on concrete off your skeleton. Um, uh, <clears throat> I also have like a pinched nerve that declares itself every now and then. It, you know, it feels like a shoulder blade behind, you know, a knife behind the shoulder blade. Of course, it's not that. In one visit to the chiropractor, the next day it's gone, and it, it happens a couple times a year. Okay. But, uh, no. but other than that, other you're, than that, you're just feeling the, good. Just the pain of the occasional bad performance. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the other kind of tension. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a look. Um, I think what we'll just do is just um, have you play just a few snippets. Okay, how long? Um, well, first, if I turn this on. Oh, about 20, 30 seconds worth okay. uh -huh. first. Mm -hmm. And we'll just see what we've got. And you'll see these lines start to reappear, and away you go. That's a totally different profile, right? Different profile, but different person, different height, okay? Different posture at the piano. A lot of things are going in here. Um, your shoulder tension is uh, fantastic. You don't have well, any. Well, you know, I got, uh, that's not true. When I'm playing, I'm, us <laughs> I'm usually like. He's on um, good behavior now. I'm serious. After I saw yeah. you work with him, I'm now thinking about it. <laughs> Seeing is believing. I mean, normally, I'm, as we always say, normally I'm extremely tense. But, you know, you guys are See, amazing. We'll have you come back up after him. <laughs> so now you get to watch, and you, and you can actually see your hand position and everything. We'll just take a look at that and play can that. I, can I get some of John's MIDI files to analyze it? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can do that for you. Thank you. Don't tell him. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Oh, play some more? No, 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 no watch. watch. It's you. <laughs> no, this is not a fixable one. This is just showing you what you really did. <laughs> okay. He wants to cheat and take out some of the MIDI notes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, basically, I think the profile of what I'm seeing as someone looking at you from a pedagogical point is quite good. Your shoulders, at, at this point, because you saw what you saw before. I'm trying to conform. Are good. You're, he's conforming. Yes. Okay, you're a good student. Right. And, and again, we have lots of nice dips, okay? The right hand was doing more than the left at that in some of the passage work, so there's more activity. But again, the fact that everything's coming down shows me that there's not a chronic problem going on there. Um, all right, well, now that you were on really good behavior. I mean, I can play like I normally play. Yeah, why don't <laughs> we play something like you normally play? Okay. Because that was just a a nice warm up for you. And you know what? See that to me would be a perfect level of a piece for a warm up. You know, just let yourself enjoy something. Just relax, you know, play something simple. I tell all my students all the time, no one ever counts the amount of notes you play. They just love something that sounds beautiful. So it's not a it's not a contest. Okay? So we're going to now let you do a little snippet of the way you really are. pedal to the metal, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, I pretty much have a Neanderthal touch, and you can see that such is the case. Yes. But now it's funny, because it was only this shoulder that was up, the, yeah. the right one was still down. But you see how the, the tension was mounting in that. So here's a, what, what I always suggest is, yes, it's, it's a kind of perpetual motion, and you've got all that going. But again, 
Pianists never breathe. We never have to think about taking a breath in something. We don't have to think about how to bow, like a string player would have to bow. But we have to really think about where we would breathe or, at a, for a moment, let the tension come out. There was, um, I'm not sure, I mean, you may be familiar with Madame Shaloff. She was a legendary piano, t piano teacher in Boston. She taught Herbie, she taught Keith Jarrett, and she was the mother of Serge Shaloff, who was this uh, great ba jazz baritone saxophone player. And she used to co co come up behind the students and lift their, their elbows as they're playing. In other words, teaching tension-free playing and breathing, mm -hmm. and she was... The a, elbow's a big, yeah, it's really a, a, a wonderful fulcrum to focus on, because if, if your elbow is loose and relaxed, the whole arm is fluid. When I play my best, it's literally yep. like that. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. It wasn't totally like that there. No, oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so let's kind of watch that one. Okay, so we'll open. And we're the second one. Okay. Here you come. Wow. Let's take a look at all this MIDI. Well, that's a lot of notes, huh? We get paid by the note. <laughs> attention there but also you're holding it right here see how the if I back this up but see how this is raising up here you're kind of locking down like right, right there right. your forearm is really pretty soft Because if you want to play something fast and loud, okay, the loudness, the way we achieve loudness on an instrument is by velocity and speed of attack. Right. So if we're talking about speed, we don't want to muscle it. The minute we muscle it, we're overloading. Okay, so we don't need to do that. You've, you've arrived at the essence of my playing. Arrived at the essence, <laughs> the overload. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to do this one again. That same piece? I think so. And no, I'd like you to just try to think about not having static tension here. Okay. I might just poke your elbows. You're playing a little bit. Okay. Ready? Okay. Mm hmm. That was a tremendous difference. Everyone can see. And even your, the left side, your shoulder was lower. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we do a comparison, okay, let's go back. Can this software compare performances previously? It will be able to. This version is not doing that. But I'm going to actually play the first one first. I'm going to bring this up because we're going to, we know what the MIDI looks like. Let's take a look here. Okay, so what are we seeing? Look at this. Look at this left shoulder. Look at that touch form. And now I want to back this up. I want you to just look at that shape here. Look at how tight both forearms are, but also the sound and sometimes this is what you may want, it's very, very percussive, okay? Let's look and listen to the one you did right after that, after we talked about it. No, that's not what I want, I want to open. Right. And we're gonna go to the last one. And oh, wow, what a different profile, first of all. Okay, now let's have a listen. interesting yeah. is you started softer but you crescendoed and still this was nowhere near as intense uh -huh. 
you would probably even be able to start louder than you just did, mm -hmm. but with that same feeling. Mm -hmm. Let's try that. So try to take the same feeling you just had I did, yeah, I'm having trouble with this instrument, but yeah, it did feel different. And did you get the, did you get the level? Did you, was that the level um, of loudness? Not quite, I'd like to try it again, actually. Okay. I'll play this in the same part of the piece. Yeah, let's, let's do that, and let's try to just have the, the same part be a little bit louder. Okay, so do you need to push this button? I'm going to, oh. in just a second. have a listen back. <coughs> Great. I really like the way your, your muscle tension is looking. It's quite good. Are you, is, is this information on yourself giving you any feedback? I know you got a lot from watching John. Uh, definitely. When I, um, I'm, again, it's, it's difficult. I realize you have to have, use a digital instrument. I mean, this, this isn't a real instrument. No offense, LaFarc, but it's not a real piano. My point is, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to establish any kind of sensitive affinity with this instrument okay. because it's... Because it's new for you, too. Yeah. Right, it's not... Yeah. It's not it's a digital instrument. Yeah. There's nothing. So you're looking for a, a specific tonal color too. Yeah. Yeah. In my yeah. in my experience, my my my, my dy dynamic range is between triple F and four F. So uh, <laughs> generally, it always is. Okay. And so I, I'm always pleased when I can add more dynamic range in my playing, and this definitely helps me do that. You had much more color too. You know. I mean, I think, I think the last few performances were just, fun, you know, more colorful. First ones were, were between F and triple S. Yeah. 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 Can I address that? Um, sure. Yeah, sure. So when you were going from the B major to the C major, uh -huh. that's that. Oh, sure. Okay. So you want to try oh, it yeah. slowly with a rotation. It was ball. kind of a, you, you, yeah. you had a, a very big jump there. going to just kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll pause it at one point here, but now I'm just going to step it and let's watch what your right hand starts doing. So now see how tight you're moving it? Uh -huh. You want to, I would relax the wrist just a little bit and let it go down and flop over to the, the B main, the B section. Yeah. Because this is where you're now spiking. So I want you to try to change this alignment in this hand. Have it just be kind of, kind of flop over to the, 
to that section. How do you get to the, from the C to the B? So it was like when you when you're changing from in here uh -huh. it's the change it's going up to that so what are you thinking because it's a different I remember the piece <laughs> okay all right. all right let's try it one more time and this time what I'd like you to think about is just when you go from the lower section up I want you to just think about Letting the arm, let, that's where your old teacher would have come over and flipped your elbows off the, mm -hmm. up, okay? So this is where we want to feel there's a release here. I thought that was a, a bunch okay. Me too. more gentle sound. Yeah, so, so we're getting a lot of information based on, on your playing, not only just from the muscle tension, which is kind of where we've been focusing. We can also really take a look at, where's my last one? 416. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's pull this down again. And now we have all these notes that are so close together. So I'm just going to. Yeah, would you like me to play in. something slower so there's fewer? No, notes? Okay. I'm just going to say how. See, we can see um, the, your timing and look how, how nice and even everything is. You know, it's really it's really nice to be able to take a look at the performance from the MIDI perspective and see. The I mean, technically, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful, look at that. I mean, to me, it's always, it's always wonderful to see a picture of the notes, the sound and time. Can you and do the same start, with the previous? If we start doing this, yeah, yeah, yeah we can. I'm going to, yeah. Good, you're my Nobody kind of cares. People. Nobody cares. Okay. But but the uh, the overall, you know, is like it's beautiful, and it, it was so so accurate and clean and, and rhythmically really really nice. So yeah, let's go back now, and let's look at the one before that, where you were a little bit tighter, and let's see if it affects the MIDI. This is always an interesting to, thing to look at. So we're going to go back over here. Okay, now. Let's see. And you know where I see the difference? I see that, you see these are much, there's more dark green ones. That's reflecting our dynamic. This was a harsher one. Okay, so here it comes. Started out nice and soft. See, now what I would be seeing there is I'm looking at the dynamic level, and I'm seeing more muscling it, which was what you did in here, uh -huh. but you got that harsher tone. Right. You had more of those double Fs, triple Fs mm -hmm. going, mm -hmm. and you didn't really need it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, aesthetically, I thought the second, the second one was better. It had more music, it was yeah. more music. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you did less wear and tear. So now we're looking at this profile, right? This is the one before, and we're just going to go back and just pull that one up again. Looking at that other one, and let's just look again to see the muscle difference. Wow. See? Different profile here. And this, you still had loud notes. You still had the dark greens, but again, it, it just had a different tone. Less effort.
So is there anything else you would like to experiment with? Do you want to try some breathing? Breathing with that passage? Um, actually, I'd like yeah. to see what it looks like playing a different, different, different type of music. Okay. Good. Okay, let me just, um, I'm going to bring this back up again. So we're going to bring it back to where we see everything. Okay, so we'll do a new, new one. Good. Uh, that was Asturias, a Spanish classical guitar piece by Albeniz. Profile. When it's more controlled, it, you know, it's less effort. Right. So we'll pull this up. Yeah. It's less effort, but again, let's just listen to the richness of your tone. To me, the, even though this isn't, it's, it's not an acoustic instrument, right. it's singing now. Like your tone was really, really singing there. And, and you can, you know, it doesn't need to take that much effort. Right. You want to try a faster one again and sure. see if you can play with less effort? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Oh really? Yeah. That's never happened. That's <laughs> never happened. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody else is impressed, right? Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know you don't believe me, but that's all right. You don't have to look at all your mini notes. This time I want you to watch your EMG and your video. Okay. <laughs> thinking about it, but isn't it amazing how quickly this can begin to talk to the, the body? Yeah, right. yeah, 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 but I mean it was, it was really, really interesting when you did it here. See, and it's right in here, when you're, this arm is relaxed, we can see the forearm, like it's not holding the tension, and that's exactly where you're letting go. Okay, it's, it's the same as when you take like a, a, a sports, in sports you have a tennis player and they have this follow through in tennis, you know, where there's like the, you're holding the racket and your arm is, is tight as you, as the ball hits the racket, there's a follow through afterwards in which you release that tension, you're not holding it so that the arm can move anywhere else. Every one of those points is a point in that phrasing of that piece where you can let go of that tension and you did. But your tone is so much better, don't you think? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. 
thing will work on the left. Oh, your left close. hand, oh, let's oh, try oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. Let's okay. try your left hand Release again. Your, well, let's try the same, the same piece again. And right, in this so time, right. your left hand, you want to think about where you can breathe. We okay. can let this release a little okay. bit too, okay? So we're gonna now, we're now taking this, he's really, really working to refine some of these little things. So now I just said, let's take the left hand where he's got the octaves, because that right hand had the beautiful dips. Now we're gonna try to get him to be aware of that. Think about it in the same piece in the left hand. Okay, good. Uh. Just, I mean, the bump, bump, the oh. broken octaves, you were just, oh, okay. Can you put a little, like, like, kind of, right, and when you release from one, if you're doing, if you're going to do that, when you come up, is where you're just going to feel like you let go for a minute. The arm feels weightless, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Almost roll it. There you go. What you're trying to what you're trying, trying to achieve is actual technique. Yeah. Well, and, just try it. Just loosen it up. Very few of us have that. Hey, you got it. I couldn't be doing this. <laughs> Let it fly out. Look at that profile. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Totally different profile. Yeah. Okay. And that's something that I always look at. Pedagogy is like, again, where are you going to be able to let that arm release? Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep it tight the whole way. Right, right. Yeah. Not, not yeah. at the ready. No. Right. And it's like of that large muscle. And it's just what that teacher had said to you before from Boston. Right. It's like I, I didn't study with her, but she okay. was, she was like, But yes. this was, you, you were weightless in the, yeah. in the elbow and the forearm. So when the doc's working with this, I'm looking at that, and my brain's seeing injury, trouble in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm. Yeah, being you, want, so you definitely about it. want to be taking the weight out because if you think about prolonged overuse over time over many Whoa. years this is where the body can begin to break down and that's one of the things that we're trying to avoid so you know the fact that you can this is only just tweaking the performance it's like not saying anything's bad but can we do it with less can we do it just with making something feel lighter or more optimal you know it's like again it's like the running coach you know somebody's now you're going to you're going to play a better race right Excellent. Yeah. So, so we can play fast, we can play loud, but we don't need to be muscling it because it's only becoming more cumbersome. And we can all hear, I think all of you here today can hear the difference in the tone that's being produced out of the instrument. And by, I think that's one of the most important forms of feedback with Proforma Vision is the fact that you've got that playback coming back to you is an essential. I mean, without this kind of feedback, we don't, we're not pulling that idea of what's going on in the muscles and in the body into the, into the actual performance. And for me as a musician, that aesthetic knowledge of like what it's doing for me as a performer is really going to help me remember that in my body because there's a reason. It's not just because somebody told me, well, this is a better way. I can hear it. I can feel it. And I can become aware of that whole totality. So that's a really essential point. It's just beautiful. I'd love you to play some more for us. And then I'd love to ask you if you'd like to come back <laughs> up because you've been in the, the audience seat. I've been enjoying listening to Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that makes one of us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, you have a question. Yeah, just how does the seat height affect the Good question? The, the bench height, the posture is, is very much affected by bench height. It's also affected by distance from the piano. If you're sitting too close, your shoulders are going to be raised up. Yeah. You're gonna, your elbows are going to be tighter when your arms can be out in front of you in a more relaxed position. You can, this can all drop in a nice, easy position. Um, I mean, I can see he's very relaxed in his position here. His alignment, he's not sitting too close. 
and um, he's not raising the shoulders to lift the forearm. And that's, com that's a common misperception in many uh, pianists that I work with, is that it's like this, they, they engage the shoulders. And that's where then a lot of that and tension when, begins when to. When I play, I mean, I'm always here. I'm <laughs> here. I'm totally here. I'm just, I mean, oh, really, he's just fooling us today. Okay. Pretty much. I'm trying to you know, understand the concept. Which, but when yeah. I'm playing, I'm literally, it's one big ball of tension. So I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> definitely trying to think about it. So. Yeah, but it's, and again, it's just one of those things that when we work with Performa Vision and we're working with the feedback that it's giving us, it's just bringing that awareness, something to think about, something to feel, something to become aware of. You know, it's not like you have homework now, but if you're playing a gig, you can, you know, in a piece think, oh yeah, I remember what that felt like. I'll try, I'll try that out. It's just like an improvisation. Let's try out that feeling. Let's see what, what it would be like, you know, and just experience that in your body, you know. And, and little by little, when you start to do it and it feels good, it feels comfortable, you'll become more aware of the spots of tension that up until now, up until really seeing it on the screen here and, and being aware of it, you weren't aware of it. To you, that was a normal level. You know, Can it's I spend normal. two minutes on explaining the actual injury that I'm worried about? Oh, you're worried about an injury. Well, okay, why, doctor. Why I okay. went after all that. Okay, so we, the last one we went after was the tension in the forearm, right? Doing your, yes. your tense, uh -huh. we started to roll. So this rotation, is done by a couple muscles. The main one, this movement, is called the supinator muscle. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, we put a nerve through the muscle. Okay, so when you contract that, just just rotate against me. Turn that way. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's squeezing the radial nerve, right? Okay. Which cuts off the signal, and also the muscle gets strangled. Is the pronator yeah. the same? Pronator is over here, just a little strap guy. But the supinator is a big one. So if I come over to the right side, when we're doing this, that, okay, right, fill it in there. Yeah. So if I flip it over, I'll explain to you, coming down through here is the median nerve. Okay. And that, that gets squished. That's carpal tunnel. That's it. Yeah. And the third most common, actually the most common, because all the shoulder tension. You get all tight in here, just like John did, right? You squeeze the nerves coming out of the neck. That's called thoracic outlet syndrome. Okay. So then you just, your arms just. I mean, I mean, there have been times I've been just yeah. frozen. Unable. Really? Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, this yeah. is some of this awareness. Some of these movements will be something that I think would be really helpful for you to begin to work with. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank Great. You're welcome. We'll have to unhook you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I was wondering if there's any plans to uh, to bring the system to other instruments, uh, or, or or if you've had any experience. I have. That. Yes, I've I've worked with um, I've been uh, working with Proforma Vision for many years now as it's been uh, designed and developed, and I have worked with string players, with woodwinds, with brass players. Um, I've worked with many many different instrumentalists with this. Um, the program that we're seeing here today with the MIDI is designed for the pianist to be to be working with pianists. But um, we do have a version that we, you don't need to use the MIDI, and you can be looking just at position and at you know your muscle tension when you're playing. Yes, and yes. Not necessarily. These are the two spots where I kind of go in to see what's going on. But if we have woodwind players, and even with the string players, um, like violinist, for instance, and violist, I'll often do the side of the neck muscle here, along with the shoulder. Um, but then it's also very important to be looking at the forearm and the, the muscles on both the underside and the top side. But I'm going to sometimes do that in a more specific way. Or if somebody's come to me and says, wow, my neck is really tight, my, my, you know, something's hurting me up here, then I would go to those spots probably first. And then I would see what we see, you know, and see if there are sometimes some simple movements that we can do. Several years ago, I had a violinist who came in, and he had a, a lot of high uh, tension in his shoulders. And um, he was... Um, complaining, so the first thing I did was I put the um, electrodes on the neck and the shoulders, and I had him just begin to play. His arm that was controlling the bow 
he was actually moving it back with his shoulder. So there was a motion coming in from his shoulder to do what should have just been from his forearm. The minute he saw that on the screen, in terms of the video placement with the pro forma vision and the muscle tension, he immediately changed it. He says, oh my goodness, I didn't know I was doing that. The second thing we found for him was that his chin rest was not the proper height. The shoulder and chin, he needed to get another piece. He was really bearing down with his neck and it was just going into a constant spasm. So he was, he was playing, but he was um, in performance. And I said to him, when you finish your performances, you need to now you know, go, go and experiment with some different sizes. You can't do it in the middle of a, of a concert season if you're that level artist. But, you know, so there are some, some things that are kind of easy fixes or, again, that we can become aware of and just, just change. And others are, are injuries over time. So this is now available in New Orleans or are you traveling? Like oh, it's, it's going to be available all over because the Performers Network is really what we're trying to um, help initiate with the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute. And it's to really kind of form this collaborative effort with people such as myself who are pedagogically approaching this, and with teams of doctors and neurologists and all kinds of um, specialists looking at musicians, because it doesn't take just one set of eyes, which is why I brought Dr. Chong today with me as, as to look at certain things from the medical perspective. Yes? What is, just out of curiosity, what are the hard costs involved in having the system set up at, you know, at a clinic or to have some people and the cost per patient? I, I don't really know. They haven't. They they're working on that at this time. We're here to just show the what we're what we're working on, and it's a few months away from that that point. But um, but the, the the initiative is be, has begun. I've been researching this and working with this for over ten years, and I'm just delighted to see it start to come to this this point. Um, I've done uh, you know work with many many musicians, mostly in the New York area, and now I'm starting to to be going to different states and traveling with it. And um, now through the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute, we will be bringing this to more and more people. And we really, really, I hope to see more teachers um, work with it and become aware of what we can really show the students. Because it's when we work at the student level that we're going to make lasting differences. Um, and I think, you know, with all the musicians over the years that I've worked with, the people who really do want to be helped I mean, there's a tremendous amount of insight that a pro, um, pro forma vision can give them about their bodies. Um, and I've worked with people who have very serious injuries um, as well as just the, the, the basic muscle strains. But again, once you see what's being given to you, you have to be willing to then go home and begin to experiment with it. Well, so now we are going to go back to Mr. Cleary. Since he got to sit and observe, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna see if there's any little changes here. Good, good. Right. So while okay. Kathleen does that, I'll t talk about the history of performing arts medicine a little bit, because yes, when it, when it started 30 years ago, I was just coming out of medical school and didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this, obviously. And there's only a very small group of doctors that I found that met in Aspen, so I joined the group, and since then I've been having a great time visiting. But in the last 10 or, 10 or so years, we've expanded it to bring in therapists, educators, uh, trainers, researchers, okay, managers, and uh, it's really growing. Now we've just, um, the people watching on this website, Athletes and the Arts, we're collaborating with the American College of Sports Medicine. So now we have the performing arts and the sports collaborating together. So we, we borrowed a lot of the technology, but it's actually common, common day, daily used in, in sports medicine to analyze movement and injury. And the other way around, because artists, dancers, and musicians do a lot of very different things, very repetitive movements. And the working conditions are much different, as, as you probably heard how busy David and John are. It's just gig to gig to gig often. Right. With, without any, any rest break, or on tour, can't sleep, yeah. food is bad, okay? So it's very, very different. And that's why we've, um, and John and I are both members, um, along with Bethany Boltman from the Musicians Clinic here, of the Performing Arts Medical Association. So um, we're pleased that we've been able to bring, bring this workshop together here as members of that as well as 
representing Performers Network and Performa Vision. And we're, you know, just really delighted that there's so many collaborative efforts that are coming from the different organizations to bring the medical team and the musicians together, as well as the teachers. All right, so we're going to uh, take a look again at you. I think this is turned on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you got to soak it all in from watching David. <laughs> what are you having to play? Whatever you would like. <laughs> Let's see. Left shoulder yeah, was so lower. Fixed. Hey, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> wow, seeing is believing, isn't it? Yeah. So this is great. Uh, See? We have a set of yeah. part of our brain called mirror neurons. So monkey yep. see, monkey do. This is how you we learn. You saw someone else, mm -hmm. and it, it, we also it have does. empathy. So the workers in this tough industry feel for each other and learn together. Yeah. And, Yes. I'm wondering, but John, the volume that you play right now, is this a live situation volume, the intensity you play? If he was doing a gig to make believe. Because <laughs> when I play the piano, I play as loud as I possibly can. I'm still not loud enough. Yeah. No problem play, you know, to match the sound. The but the remember problem. that your loudness comes from speed. Right? So you take your weight out. Okay? The minute you're muscling it, you're just making it harder. It's not going to give you the volume. Okay? When, Speed. When you play with a new all the stronger and you have to play a rope piano, it's just. Yeah. yeah. It's a challenge. I'm just wondering if you could do it with no tension to play as loud as physically. You're going to have know. tension. Okay, let's look <laughs> yeah. at what this screen. There's tension here. He's not going to not have yeah. tension. But there's a difference right now from where he was yeah. before David got up, right? So we're not saying we're going to erase tension. But I'm going to say, is there a more optimal way to do it? Can you still get a loud sound? Yes. Does it all, is it all wired together in your bodies right now that that's the way you feel and that's the way you approach it when you play? Yes. Biofeedback is going to give you an opportunity to try it with a little bit different feel. See how, see how maybe you can introduce some little changes. Again, it's not like, you know, push a button and everything is going to change. But your question is, yeah, you have to play loud. But it it could be lighter, speed, you know, speed. So you said the speed, the 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 velocity comes from the speed rather than mm -hmm. the amount of muscles that you're using. Mm -hmm. So, but surely, to increase the speed, you're using more muscles, aren't you? Isn't it the same thing? No. What about weight? I was always taught, you know, weight, weight, body, weight. No. Oh my God. Well, how come how come somebody who's a hundred pounds? And break a board in karate? Did they have to be 250 pounds? Why do I have teenage students who are entering competitions who maybe weigh 100, 120 pounds, who are playing beautiful Rachmaninoff Chopin with tremendous volume and beautiful tone? Okay, they don't have to be big. So I think that, you know, yeah, and we have to look at that in technique, in music technique, and I'm, I'm more classically trained, so I'm coming from the other end, but there are a lot of schools that have taught of a relaxation base, okay? It doesn't need to start with the heavy muscle. You can't. And you've got large movement that's assisting small movement. The minute you're going to muscle it, you're just going to lock yourself all up. But having said that, when you perform and you emote and you feel something, what do you do? You tense, you're, you know, you feel something. And so the thing to learn is to let those emotions go into the music as opposed to locking them back in your body. Now, a lot of performers I know who move a lot, 
they have a misperception because by their movement, they think they're making so much more color out of their sound. Well, when they listen back to the piano from the, from the data, they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know. Oh, that wasn't as large as, that wasn't a big crescendo at all. Or boy, I didn't have much of a dynamic range. But in the moment of performing, it felt like they did. So, you know, I'm always trying to sift it out and go, wait a minute, what's what? What's this show and it's what does it sound like? And is it really what you need to do to achieve that? That's and not necessarily. Yeah. Let's, uh, let, me, let me just have you take that thought before John does anything with you. And let's, uh, could you just do, you just said to me you could do it with its speed and it's not force. Could you just take that thought and play again? What would you like me to do? Try and whatever. I just want you to think about speed being what creates loudness and not muscling it. Then playing the same thing. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever you'd like. <laughs> By the way, the, the left hand is looking higher because of also he's crossing across his body. Okay, so depending on my body alignment, like when I have to cross over, you're going to see a higher level of tension there. Okay, if he shifted his body and you were more centered behind like both arms, that profile would look different. Uh. Ah. Should we try it? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So if you shift your body, not sit sideways. No, just sit <laughs> up here. Why? Just do it up there for a minute. There's another. There's another way to shift it. But go ahead. We'll start. We'll start with that. Now let's just see if we look a little different, so that you want to be square in front of the notes. Uh huh. <laughs> different or just weird? Um, felt a little bit weird because I'm not yeah. used to playing it. Well, like it, was, it was a lot yeah. of movement. Yeah. I tend to, we tend to just kind of shift the upper body. But, sure. but um, yeah, I think, it was, I think that was a little too much to ask because I think compared to the one before, it's not that big a difference. Let's take a look. We're at, where are we? Four, we just did 448, so. Oh yeah, it is a difference. Yeah. Boy, how quickly we forget, eh? So this was the one right before. Wow. Ah. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. That was the first one. That was the first. So, so we see where this is, right? Mm -hmm. We're good? Okay, and we're going to go back to 448. Well. slide on the bench but the whole point is that now you're getting into the whole body and how the choreography of the whole body is what plays the piano it's not just the fingers it's not just muscle in the forearm it's got to be the whole alignment okay so so it's something to think about you don't have to move the whole body as I said and slide up and down <laughs> but you want to feel as if you give yourself some space to have the arm in a comfortable position so if I was to play that, if I, I mean, normally I would sit here in front of middle C. Yeah. So I'm playing up here. This but last one I did up here. Right. If I'm, if, if, what am but I supposed to do? Go like this? You know, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Like that, as opposed to like that. 
However, I don't know. Yeah, you could try it both ways. Let's see which one feels better. Let's see which is better. So he's just come up with two different ways he's, he wants to approach this to see if it feels better and looks better. So we're going we're gonna to let him go. Which one are you going to do first? Mm -hmm. Wait till this goes on first. OK, now you can start. OK. They were about the same. That was about the same. Second one was a little bit higher, but but I think you moved yourself up. You didn't like literally just lean over. No. But the point is, however you mm. start playing with that idea, is to not just reach, but to have yourself more comfortably aligned behind it. So I'm still a bit confused. Are you to, so technically, it'd be better to if you're playing up there to no, I would go be, like this. And yeah, I would. I would move up yeah. like that a little bit. Okay. Maybe not quite that big. All right, well, let's work on something else. Got another one? Sure. OK. Wait till it comes. OK. over and I stood behind you and just reminded your shoulder to not move so much, you dropped it down. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we had a change because there was just a way, because you, you were talking a lot from here to do that. Don't need to. This can move, okay? You can feel the rhythm, mm -hmm. okay? But don't do it in something that's going to pull up and, and begin to tense your muscles. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, hold on. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep the alignment for you. Uh huh. So don't think about starting from here. Okay. And. be very very active from that and it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be so you know that's something this was lower everything was a little bit better mm -hmm. that time well, let's try a trick here okay, okay so now you're gonna have a hips. trick okay. from dr. Chong that's what I want you to do I want you okay. to sit like that and just as a stretch reach up to the sky okay. without and pulling your electrodes out yeah <laughs> and think you're just arching back take a big breath in Arch back. Feel a stretch. Yep. In here, all this stuff up in here. And then exhale and just let your shoulders and arms drop. Really relax. Okay. Okay. I want this to loosen up. So just by changing that changes that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So see should we try? See if that makes a difference. Hold on. Let me just start this up again. Put that together with a dressing down there. Just follow your. There you go. So we can move now. See, so if you have your bum this way, mm -hmm. you can't move. Yeah, we were locked. Okay. Okay. So I was consciously trying to keep no, it in that position. Just roll onto your sit bones. Yeah, just, so just roll forward like, like in a natural position. Right. So you're actually sitting on your sit yep. bones, and then you can move around. 
Okay. The butt's free to move. Try it again. Okay. We're going to go for this again. You'll be singing this one. This, you still have to sleep with this time. <laughs> some things to just start working with to, to begin to think about um, truncle, using. Because it seems that it wasn't any, uh, the, the three <laughs> times I played Tipitina just then, there's a lot of activity going on here, my left shoulder that isn't going on, my right shoulder. So it's the blue, yeah. The blue. Yeah. yeah. The blue no, this time so I felt it, it was much more actually. I thought it was better before when I just, we just kind of quieted yeah, you I down. <laughs> and that's really kind of where I work from pedagogically. I'm just trying to have this become more quiet. He's talking a lot. You can see it, okay? You can see this arm really just wanting to, to do the talking. And again, when, I, when you're playing, that doesn't feel bad, and it's not. But mm. just when you do it over many hours. So the idea for, from, is, to, is to be able to essentially play exactly the same, for the same <laughs> notes to become out at the same velocity and the same intensity, but without all the movement of the shoulder. With less. Right. With You'll less. have some. You're not going to be yeah. in a straitjacket. That's, never that's to be me the is that there's the issue is whether you can put the same expression in. My, for me, when you're playing, you yeah. are moving, you're feeling it. You're moving. And it's not something that just happens robotically from no, here. No, but you're going to move just a little bit less. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like maybe not quite so much. Yeah. But to feel that generate. I mean, the other thing for me is when I'm playing, it feels good to play. Good. And that it is like move, to move. Uh, yeah. moving for me is actually, but it's. I mean, from an audience perspective, you listen to the oh, notes that are part. coming out. But most when I'm playing, I'm mostly playing for me. I know. And it's, um, that's how I get my groove on, is to feel it. It's like yeah. dancing at the piano. Absolutely. It feels like, to, to kind of try and cut Absolutely. that back is, is removing a lot of what the I don't want you to cut it. I want you to just, yeah. just take maybe just a, a twinge out. Like when you move the body mm. alignment behind the other, yeah. it, was, it was with less effort. Mm. So it's just little tweaks. We're not... We're not changing you, <laughs> okay? You're brilliant, and it's, it's great playing, so we don't need to change that mm. at all. No, I mean, I obviously, well, I would need to change it if, it, if however, it was bad for me, and right. if it was creating problems, then obviously that's Sure, that's and that's what's really, really exciting, is when you come together in, in you know, workshops like these, is we, we see a lot of information, we start learning, and, but the, the really exciting thing is how you kind of just take in from each other, and even all of you sitting here today, it's just like, you're, you know, you're taking the information in, and you know, I've, I've done many, many workshops and group settings for students and you know, what one learns from the other is just, is just really always exciting and you can, you can see them start to, to address the changes in their playing, you know, you see the differences. So these are just a lot of things for you to think mm -hmm. about. I mean, we're, t we're working with two high level pianists. We're not working with injured musicians. We're not working with today here. We're not working with people who have real issues. But we're looking at a piece of technology that's really giving us a window into the performance, into the performer, you know, what's going on. And, and to be able to take what we normally would be just watching and listening to and say, wow, isn't that great? And literally put it under a microscope and be able to dissect it, be able to see what's going on. It's just, for me, it's just so exciting, yeah. you know, you can, because it gives us so much more information. Right. You can and, see the potential and prevention of injury, which and is, this is exactly where we're going. 25 years seeing musician racks. And this is so exciting. Yeah. That this very, is the time very emotional for, for me because you can go there. I've seen these patterns. I've seen the dangers and the tragedies. And if we can just make those little tweaks. You know, yeah. For example, teaching at the Royal Conservatory. These are really you know, high-strung thoroughbreds. And they yeah. all want to be yeah. you know, long, long in Horowitz. But if we can just make those subtle little changes early on, just like these great guys. Yeah, but Makes that's all why the difference in the world. Being able to use something like this on a screen and have it be so simple and understandable, you know, and again, something that teachers can work with, students can work mm -hmm. with. I have even students come into my studio at NYU. Um, sometimes when I'm not there, I'll leave a setup and they come in and they practice. And they've been able to really 
get some nice work done during the week. So, you know, it can be used by the students themselves. And it's just, it's just a really, really wonderful, valuable tool for us to use. Um, you can check out more information about Proforma Vision at www.proformavision.com. You can learn about the PRO, PRO, PRO. You can learn about um, the Performing Arts Medical Association at www.artsmed.org. And we, Bethany, I don't know if I'm remembering your uh, web address, but for the um, New Orleans Musicians Clinic, it is? <laughs> okay. www.neworleansmusiciansclinic, a big mouthful, .org. And um, we thank all of you for being here today with us. Let's give a big round of applause for John Cleary and David Prokonowski. Thank Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.